I grew up in New Jersey. I didn't grow up anywhere near the ocean. I got to visit it with my family and go jump in the waves and get sunburned and sandy and drive home in the station wagon, but I didn't really start sailing until midlife. Point. Anytime. My eyes were opened to a world I had never really understood before. As a helms person on a racing boat, I'm incredibly dependent on the skills of everybody around me. Everybody on the boat is depending on everybody else. It's like a ballet. It's a choreography. It also demonstrates, I think, that the systematic nature of many things in the world. When we look in our philanthropy at natural systems and we talk about restoring balance into those systems, we're looking at something that we're experiencing on a sailboat. Nothing happens without something else happening. So by 2005, when we started the Schmidt Family Foundation, I was very much guided by this idea that everything is interconnected. And our first focus was on the transformation to an economy run by clean energy, regenerative energy. Instead of looking at things in silos, we start to look at them in an interconnected way. This led us to work in human rights, because how do you solve all of those other problems if you ignore the problem of human rights and who the burden falls upon? This is even more important at a time of climate change. And so as we were working on those projects, I started learning to sail. And then I learned to scuba dive. And I started to look under the surface of the ocean with my curious mind saying, well, what's all this then? Well, what is this? I don't know anything about this. And I'm not a marine scientist, but there's a whole world here and nobody knows it's here. And so that interest and my husband's interest in technology led us to the Schmidt Ocean Institute and the first research vessel that we developed between 2009 and 2012, the first Falcor. Human activity has had this extraordinary impact on ocean health. It is our life support system. It's half the air we breathe. And for sailors, it's our playground. It's where we have our recreation. Don't we have a responsibility to the health of that place? At Schmidt Ocean Institute, we have a 10-year plan in front of us. We plan to be in all seven ocean basins. And we've communicated about that plan to all the other philanthropically operated vessels. There's an operation called Seabed 2030 that is attempting to map the bottom of the ocean in its entirety by the end of this decade. We are participating in that and our ship is mapping everywhere we go. And those discoveries are piling up. As a platform, Falcor 2 is inviting science parties from around the world to use our facilities at no cost. And what we ask in exchange for that is that they share their data openly and in real time with the scientists around the world. Schmidt Ocean Institute is deeply engaged in working as a platform for the testing of new technologies. We have an ROV called Sebastian that we built ourselves. We launched it in 2016. We have a relationship with SailDrone uh, that makes autonomous sailing vessels that can work in concert with other kinds of technology like ROVs. There's always the analysis part of what we do and also the human connection that is formed between the scientists. They've become a kind of community of practice, which I hope is transforming the way marine science is done in a more open sourced kind of way. We started 11th Hour Racing years ago because we wanted to engage the industry, we wanted to engage the sailors at the regattas, the people organizing the races. It was designed to have no waste. You walk into a race village and you're talking about the ocean. And there's nothing better to me than to see a little child wandering through the race village, taking a parent by the hand and saying, look, there's an exhibit about dirt over here. We're calling it 11th hour racing because it's the 11th hour right now for our ocean. We need a sense of urgency about what we can do, especially those of us who depend on the ocean for our industry or our recreation or our entertainment. It's our job. If you think there isn't a role for you, there is. If you think you're too small to make a difference, you're not. And when we get that in our head and we understand, either as boat operators, builders, sailors, all of us together are part of the solution because we really want the winner to be the ocean, right? At the end of the day. When the ocean wins, we all win. <laughs>